our rate increase conversations. We're gonna jump into that. I'm telling you, you guys, the number one thing that's killing your agents is emotion. The emotion of Mr. Jenkins or Mrs. Jenkins yelling at them. The emotion of, oh my God, you brought me on to sell cheap insurance. Oh my God, you've never role play. You've never trained with me. You've never told me how to add value. You've only told me how to go into the system and shop for cheaper insurance. That's what you've taught me. So you've never taught them the five primary actions that they can do to influence a customer's rate or the seven reasons that rates increase as an industry. So I'm going to help eliminate some of that emotion. How do you control emotion? Have a set order of doing things, have a checklist, have a workflow. That's how you control emotion. When emotions are running rampant, it's because you're creating your own workflow. You're creating your own mental checklist. So you're putting emotion in front of every piece of that checklist. Guys, what you're about to learn now is going to help eliminate a lot of that emotion. There are only five things we can do to really influence a customer's rate. I say influence because we don't control the rate. The carriers control the rate and the carriers have a damn good reason for charging what they charge. They pull the credit, they know the claims history, they know the losses, they know how much they're paying out, all these wonderful things that we'll talk about in a second. They know all those things. We have five ways that we can influence a customer's rate. Number one, verify and update the information used to rate the policy. The VIN number, the square footage of the home, the current number of employees if this is a commercial account. Verify and update the information. Here's what's happening. These rates and having weak staff and having weak training and having weak role play and having no training on understanding why rates go up or what we can do, you know what it's generating or what it's creating? It's creating a group of agents that lie constantly. That's why you'll quote someone with genuine, honest, to the point rating information and then they'll go down the street and some other agent will lie, quote them less coverage than what they need, leave off stuff like, oh, they don't add the kids. We added the kids in our quote. They don't add the kids in their quote. We added all 17 digits of the VIN number in our quote. They didn't add it or they went down a model in their quote on their auto quote. They didn't use the super model. They went down to the G model or to, you know, model basic car window roll up model or whatever. And so now they come back and the customer's going, well, I went down the street and they got me this rate $80 a month cheaper than what you got the rate for. Well, nine times out of 10, it's because the other agent lied. Okay. Just being honest. It's because the other agent lied. So what do we need to do for every person that tells you that someone beat your quote? You need to say, can I see that quote? Can you give me a copy of that quote or send me over your deck page? And let's, just let me get a second set of eyes on that just to make sure that they wrote in your best interest. Well, first of all, it's going to give you three pieces of intelligence that you need. Number one, you'll know who the carriers are that's kicking your butt. Number two, you'll know who the agents are that's lying. And number three, you'll have an opportunity to educate the customer on what's in their best interest versus just what's in a cheaper price. Because it doesn't do any good for you to have a cheaper price if you're gonna pay 10 times more money out of pocket when you have a claim. So number one, verify and update the information used to rate the policy. Your takeaway from that is if a customer is going to leave you because of a lower price or because of whatever, do everything you can to get that customer's deck page or that customer's quote in your hand and then look for those three pieces of intelligence. Which carriers are kicking our butt? Which agents are lying? And is this coverage really in the customer's best interest? Number two, Verify the customer has all of the discounts they're qualified to receive. Here's the problem with discounts. A lot of carriers buy business. What do I mean by buying business? They will give you every one of these brand new discounts, right? The 
thank you for coming to the neighborhood discount and oh you've got good hair discount and oh you just future effective date if you sign up with us three months before you actually put the policy in place we'll give you a discount for that and then there are a lot of discounts that fall off there are some discounts like a roof discount maybe it decreases each year or maybe you got a new car discount, but your car is not new anymore. So the discount fell off. Maybe you've got a good student discount, but you never gave us your grades. So the good student discount fell off. So when we talk about discounts, we want to verify the customer has all of the discounts they're qualified to receive. This is another reason you want the deck page. A lot of times you can look at that deck page and you look at those discounts and I've seen many times where the person would write their home, but there was a home and auto discount, but we still have the auto and the person moved their home to this other carrier. So what does that mean? That means the moment the carrier actually finds out what's going on, that discount falls off. Well, the other agent, because they're you know not ethical, so the other agent tricked the customer into coming with them. The other agent lied to get the customer to come with them. We need to do our research going in the door and coming out the door. We need to do our research. We need to verify. And then there are times where we can see discounts that the other carrier applied that we may not have thought about, that maybe we didn't add that discount, or maybe we didn't put them with a carrier that offered that discount. So we need to do more intelligence other than let me throw it in my radar and see what the radar spits out. So verify the customer has all the discounts are qualified to receive, both good and bad. Number three, check to see if there's coverage that the customer wants to lower or completely get rid of because they may not need or want the coverage. This is where we have agency standards though. Let's say our agency standard is 25500 and we tell the customer, we want every one of our customers to have 25500 for uninsured, underinsured motorists because we feel like this is what best protects them. You decided you don't want that. That's fine. I will sell you the 100, 300. I'll sell you the 50, 100 if that's what you want. But I have three things I have to do. Anytime you go below our standard, number one, I have to make you aware of our standard, right? Number two, I have to explain the consequences that you could be dealing with if you were to file a claim if you're not at our standards. You're gonna pay more money out of pocket. You may not have more money for legal. You may have to pay for your own rehab. Um, you may have to pay your own lost income, any of those. So I just, I have to explain the consequences. And then number three, I have to have you sign a decline coverage form. So yes, you could go down the street and get this policy cheaper somewhere else that's not as good, but I want you to know what you're getting. So I'm gonna, tell you why we suggest what we suggest. I'm gonna explain the consequences, and then I'm going to have you sign a decline coverage form just saying you don't, uh, you're not accepting our standards, you chose to go below that. So that's number three. Check to see if there's coverage the customer wants to lower or completely get rid of because they may not want or need the coverage. And a lot of agents, agencies have been very arrogant over the years and said, oh, I won't write a customer that doesn't take this. So I won't write a customer below this. Well, you know what? In 1999, that might have worked. In 2009, that might have worked. Hell, in 2018, 2019, that might have worked. But in 2023, you have to really decide what you want your agency to be. So you may say, you know what, Billy? We're not changing. These are our minimum. If you want something below that, go down the street because you're you're too much trouble, you're too much hassle, you're gonna hurt my lost runs, you're gonna, you know, my lost ratio, go down the street. But there are a lot of agents that don't have that luxury. A lot of agents need to do what I'm asking you to do, which is do more, have a more of a conversation, have more details, get more information. Try to save that customer based on your quality of work, not just on a number that you chose. So number three, check to see if there's coverage the customer wants to lower to get, or completely get rid of because they may not want or need the coverage. Number four, adjust deductibles. But be warned, 
Increasing deductibles could force the customer to pay much more money out of pocket than they're actually saving. So a lot of guys are bumping, a lot of guys and gals are bumping folks up to two and three percent wind and hail deductible, two and three percent uh, total deductibles on their home. And while that might be saving them 500, 800, even a thousand bucks, right? Or, or even more. Now suddenly they have a claim, they better have $40,000 in the bank. They better have $60,000 that they can easily put their hands on because they now have a $300,000 uh, wind and hail deductible by the time they look at everything or 60 or 70 or $90,000. They live in a $900,000 home. You gave them a three, a 3% wind and hail deductible, figure out how much that's going to be out of pocket. So again, guys, I'm not telling you not to adjust deductibles. I'm saying, make sure that when you adjust the, the deductible, that you really explain to the customer what the total out of pocket is going to be. Yes, you're going to have to become more consultative. Yes, you can't just throw stuff in the radar and spit out the lowest price and go, this is what uh, you do. This is what you have. This is all we can offer you. I need you to have deeper conversations with your customer. And then number five, remarket. Here's the problem. A lot of agents, they jump five first. That's the first thing they do. As soon as that customer hits a 10% or 15% rate increase, they immediately remarket the policy. Well, there's two things about that. Number one, the agency gets paid on premium revenue, right? That means every time I lower the premium, the agency takes a pay cut. Well, staff be smart about this. At some point, if the agency keeps taking a pay cut, your value to that agency drops. And that's why a lot of agents, there's a lot of turnover because, oh, Billy, my book dropped 30% in revenue over the last year. I had to let Judy go. I had to let Bob go. I couldn't afford him anymore. Well, staff, think about that. If you had had some of these conversations, verifying the information, verifying the discounts, or maybe just the customer doesn't understand the coverage and the real benefits and consequences of not having that coverage. Maybe adjusting the deductibles was not in that customer's best interest. So now, instead of there being a 20% drop in revenue, maybe there was only a 15% drop in revenue or 10% drop in revenue. Well, now they can afford to keep you. So a lot of times, guys, by jumping to remarketing first, you're actually hurting yourself as an employee because you're hurting the agency's bottom line. And nine times out of 10, you're probably hurting the customer. I say nine times out of 10 simply because of the history of what I've seen. When I sit down and I actually do the review or I look at that customer record and I go, wow, okay, so you drop them down from 250 down to 100, 300. Yeah, that's what the customer wanted. No, the customer wanted to have more value for what they were paying. I get it. It's not about the cheap price sometimes. It's just, am I paying for something that's worth it? So you drop them down to 100, 300. But this person is a business owner. This person has $4 million in assets that somebody's going to go after. This person is the primary breadwinner in their family and you just drop their uninsured and underinsured motorists down to 100, 300 from 250, 500, which means now if they're in an accident with an uninsured driver, which 40% of the drivers on the road either don't have insurance or don't have enough insurance to cover you know, the, cause, the, the accidents that they caused. So now you just basically put this person $150,000 in the hole to save them what? $30, $60. So no, guys, it's not always in the best interest. But understand, you have five primary ways that you can influence a customer's rate. Now, yeah, there are some other things. You can ask for credits. You can go to the underwriter if you guys are friends and say, hey, this is a really good customer. They got a lot of stuff with me. Can you do that? That's, that's out of the norm. But normally, what the average person 
the average $20 an hour person sitting in an agency, what can they influence? These are the five ways they can influence a customer's rate. Verify and update the information used to rate the policy. Verify the customer has all of the discounts are qualified to receive. Check to see if there's coverage the customer wants to lower or completely get rid of. Four, adjust deductibles. And then five, remarket. Guys, go one through five. Don't go five first. Go one through five. Does that mean you're going to save the customer? No, it does not. Does that mean that you're going to suddenly find some way and the customer is going to say, oh, my God, you're so amazing. I want to stay with you. No, it does not. But this is a process. Hey there, insurance agents. Are you tired of hearing how every technology tool, coaching program, or marketing program is going to show you how to take your insurance agency to the next level? The reality is, without having established agency processes that incorporate technology, automation, conversations, email, text message templates, and time management, nothing will stick in your agency for very long. Even without structure and processes, your team is always going to figure out a way to get things done. You know that. So the issue is not that your team needs more things to do. What they want is to be more efficient with the things that they already do. I'm going to quickly give you eight reasons why you should become a member of Inspire a Nation Business Mentoring and our insurance agent mentoring and coaching program. Reason number one, we have tailored coaching. We provide personalized strategies to meet your agency's unique needs. Reason number two, proven processes. Over the last 18 plus years, we've grown from a scratch agency to a partnership of over 150 insurance agencies that in total produce over a billion dollars a year in new and renewal insurance premiums. Reason number three, industry experts read our google and linkedin reviews and hear it from our happy clients who've already seen remarkable results reason number four our video and document library we give the templates scripts documents forms checklists everything that you need and they can be easily modified and used in your agency more importantly we help you set up and implement the templates that we provide. Reason number five, comprehensive training. We cover everything from lead generation to sales, to marketing, to maximizing the technology tools you use in your agency. Reason number six, agency level coaching and training and role play sessions. Any program can tell you what to say and do. But actually seeing and hearing it done correctly leaves a lasting impact on your agency. Reason number seven, membership price. You won't find a program that gives you as much value as Inspire Nation Business Mentoring, not in the insurance industry. Other programs charge you thousands of dollars a month and only deliver a fraction of the resources we provide at Inspire Nation Business Mentoring. Reason number eight, virtual coaching. We schedule all virtual sessions so that they're convenient for your agency. We don't block you into our schedule. So what are you waiting for? Check out Inspire Nation Business Mentoring today and let us help transform your insurance agency and let's do it together. Visit our website at www.inspireanation.org. Again, that's www.inspireanation.org. I'm Dr. Billy Williams, president of inspirenation.org and senior instructor. Thanks guys, have a great day.